All right, hey everybody, uh, my name is Nate Stevens, and I am here with Dr. Edward Close, who I just had the pleasure of uh, spending a day in, in just deep training. Um, Dr. Close's resume and experience is so long that it'd take me about 10 minutes of time to go into his experience. So I'm just going to be quiet and turn it over to Dr. Close here and introduce you to him. Uh, Dr. Close, thanks for having this time with me, and thanks so much for your training today. And, uh, I was really, really impressed to be able to be here. It was a nice journey to be with my team. Um, what I'd like to ask you is uh, if there's two major points you could give to anyone just brand new coming into Young Living Oils, coming into the world of aromatherapy, or it doesn't have to be two, but maybe if you could highlight and just touch on what inspires you in your heart to tell the people that, that they could focus on sure. and learn. Sure. The one thing is to use the oils and uh, get familiar with them, uh, open your mind up to them, uh, realize that they can do things for you that may be outside um, the, uh, the box, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, young living people tend to think outside the box, most of us, and uh, <clears throat> they, like uh, Dr. Stewart said in his uh, talk today, uh, a lot of it is your intent, and we know now physically through uh, quantum physics and, and uh, molecular studies that thought influences the shape of the molecules and what they do. So your intent, so the thing to do is use them and uh, give them time, um, let them work. Uh, if it doesn't work on you the first time you try it, don't say, oh, these don't work, you know. Try it over a period of time and keep track of it, actually. Make notes, uh, make records, take pictures. We've got, we've got so many testimonials where people have had deep cuts and used the oils on them. Instead of having to have them sewn up in a, in a hospital, they heal with no scar mm -hmm. and they heal faster. And uh, just so many things like that, like the story about the, the teeth. Dr. Stewart told me. I have the same story. I was going to have to have a root canal. I used thieves oil on a, on a cotton ball and stuck it up in there every night when I went to bed. I didn't have to have the, the um, root canal. I still got the tooth. Uh, but the, the dentist would have had me doing it. In fact, he wrote antibiotic prescriptions for me, and that's what stopped me. I didn't want to get them filled. So I thought, well, we have antibiotic oils. And so I thought, well, I'll do this. Went back in two weeks and he said, well, we can't do this unless you're taking the antibiotics. The second time I went back, I said, we'll do another x-ray. He did the x-ray and I didn't need the, I didn't need the root canal. So there are many That's stories amazing. like that. So if you do it yourself, yeah. then you have a testimony. Yeah. If you use it for something and you know it works, then you can say it with conviction. So that's, that's number one. And number two, it, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to build a business, then the key is, like my wife said I think, today, don't give up. Many people don't succeed in this kind of business because they give up too easily. They get a, a negative response and they think, well, they, they let the negative take over and say, well, I don't have the skills, or I don't have the message, and there's never an opportunity to leave one. It's done that to me three or four times in the last few weeks. You know, so keep your attitude positive and don't give up. That's awesome. I'm glad you told me about the thieves because I've had a cavity and uh, that cotton ball technique, I'm going to try that. Because I've been saying, you know what, I know that I can take care of this, but you know, I realize that I haven't been consistent. And I understand consistency is so very important. And I can echo what you said just a little bit earlier that um, when I get out of using my oils regularly, daily, when I just kind of set them aside and say, well, you know, I know I have that there if I need it. I, there's a definite correlation with my energy level, my frequency, my vibration. And as well, I've noticed that, like you mentioned, with intention, uh, you know, if I get in a really angry mood, and then I go, man, I better go get some oils to lift me up, and I go, ah, okay, it doesn't really work as well. I mean, it definitely, but if I <laughs> calm myself down peacefully, say take my frankincense that stimulates my pineal gland, and, and sit and calm and breathe and do something prayerfully with intention, 
And wow, the dramatic the effects are so dramatic. So if I go into it with love and willingness to change, rather than okay, I need to get my medicine for my oils now. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and there are studies that show over and over that that's the case. That the attitude and the intent are, are so mm -hmm. important. And we have the we have the science to show. That. It is so true. Yeah. Another interesting correlation I've noticed is that I spent a lot of years studying shamanism and uh, plant medicines of different cultures. Mm -hmm. And um, many cultures, the shaman talk to the plants and they're very reverent with their interactions with them. Some call certain plants mother or father or dios, uh, uh, mother god, father god plants. and. Uh, I've noticed, and, and they say this because we built a relationship with these plants. When you work with the plants, they build a relationship with you and they will talk to you. Absolutely. And this might be one of those out of the box sounding things, however it's been practiced by humanity for as long as we have record of. And I've noticed this too. Have you noticed that where, where you just know an oil almost calls to you? Have you ever had that kind of experience? Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think you develop that intuition over time. Too. My wife is, well, women are more intuitive to start with. So mm -hmm. uh, she has had that sort of thing happen over, over again with her. And uh, she was one of, she was Dr. Uh, Stewart's first care instructor. Oh, amazing. And, uh, and she, so she did a lot of uh, brain drops and emotional releases and everything. And she's gotten more and more intuitive. Uh, she was an intuitive person all of her life, but she shut her on and out because of negative things that happened to her. But uh, when you, you know, I loved what John uh, Lindbergh said in his, in his talk, and that is when you, and I tried to get that into mind, that when you, Align yourself with God and good and the patterns of the universe. Um, it's, uh, it's a battle against nature. It's a battle against the breakdown of body, mind, and spirit. And you don't have to go that way. You keep a positive attitude. Uh, I believe everything, every pattern that exists is evidence of existence of consciousness, what I call in my book, Transcendental Physics, primary consciousness. Primary consciousness pervades everything. We are individualized consciousness. This is why the shaman can talk to the plant and get a response. This is why, because the plant's part of primary consciousness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Without that primary consciousness, entropy would, uh, would destroy the world and the universe in a very short time. Poof. <laughs> so there's something binding us all together here. And that's, that's what it is. That's what life is all about. And when you realize that, you realize that's the purpose. The purpose is to learn and to use the energies that you have and align yourself with the reality that's out there. I like what he said, you know, about what, recognize what is. Don't put your stamp on it and say, well, I don't like, I don't think I'd like you because you wear a hat. Yeah. Any, right. Any given thing. People are judgmental. Well, and then I'm going to categorize you as one of those hat haters. Yeah. And I'm going to stay away. And the first thing you know, <laughs> there's a wall between us. And right. We, can't, we don't accomplish anything. But that's because we don't watch what's happening in our own minds. Mm -hmm. If you really inspect and be very careful about what happens in the mind, you can I believe that. Yeah. And for people in the other business, that's what they need to know. If they, uh, if they have the faith, they don't give up. They keep doing what they know is right. Mm -hmm. They develop a deeper and deeper knowledge, they experience, they're using the lives. They can't think of it. I believe it. 